Good, evening, good afternoon, brethren. Brother Tony's uh, text that he'll be using today is Romans ten seventeen. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So if, if you have faith, it is an indication that you have heard the Lord. This is the appointed means through which faith comes, hearing. The word of God that brings faith is the gospel. This accounts for the rarity of faith in our times. The gospel is not seen as important or what the saints need, so faith has become rare. So you might reason that if one hears the gospel preached, that they will have faith. Well, we know this is not the case because we've preached the gospel to many people that do not have faith. So there's got to be more to this than just hear, just the gospel being preached. Amen. This gospel does have to be preached, yes. but this hearing also comes just as faith comes, and it comes Amen. by the word of God. Amen. So this hearing in our text is the capacity to hear, and this can only be possessed through God speaking the word that you will hear, Him giving the command and giving you ears to hear. Amen. So this capacity to hear comes by the authoritative word of Jesus. He, is spe he speaks the ability to hear in those that have tender hearts. And those that really hear, they follow him. We've talked about this scripture uh, quite a bit recently. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So if you hear the Lord and you're one of his sheep, you're following him today. And this word only comes through Christ and by Christ. He is the one who made it possible to hear because he is the one who laid down his life and took it back up, who took the sin, the sin of the world upon himself and who opened the way of God. So he chooses who hears, and he has the right. He's the only one that has the right. He did this work. He paid the price. All glory and honor belong to him. And God desires to be known, and this is why we have ears to hear and why faith has come to you. Because God wants to be known. This is why there, there are even those that are chosen to hear, not because of them, but because of God. Amen. So then, if you have heard and believe, praise God that He has given you ears to hear. Amen. Not all have these ears. And this motivates us even more to draw close as we have been chosen to be a new creation in Christ. What a marvelous co consideration this is. Chosen of God to be with Him eternally. To know Him. He causes us to hear Him and we respond in faith. And we are even uh, given to build up others as well as we speak these things that has been given to us. As we say them aloud, then we hear what we, what we have understood. We say it out loud and we hear it and we build ourselves up in our faith. So we're able to put these words into understanding and our own faith is even increased by this. So now our brother Tony will speak those things our Lord has caused him to hear and those who Jesus has given ears to hear will have their faith increased. It wasn't my first choice. Uh, someone beat me to my, my choice. But this, you know, after I got started on this verse here, I saw that the Lord had planned it this way. It did work out perfectly. He wanted me to go back through this again. And I'm thankful that uh, I was able to do this. I'm thankful for the brethren who set me up so far with what they've said that's come before me and has spoken. You know, if, if the substance wasn't in Christ, brethren, though all we could get up here and do is talk about a lot of theories and, and, and philosophy and things like that. But see, we, we understand our substance is in Christ Jesus. Now, I want, to, uh, want you to think with me and review... Uh, the, these things with me as a way of introducing and getting in our what I wanted to say. You know, I want to start out by saying, you know, no man can see God and live. Yeah. Okay? I, I think about that a moment. We have the Word of God on this. God Himself said, told Moses. And he, and he said, no man can see me and live. You remember the account. Uh, Moses had spent a considerable time with God and he got to the point and he said, and he said I beseech thee, show, show me thy glory. You know, and, uh, and so he wanted to be in the presence of God. But you know, uh, he told him, you know, I, you can't see me and live. Uh, and uh, it's not that God didn't want these things, you know, for Moses, because he, he could have just told Moses no. Yeah. 
No, not, not, no, because, you know, he could tell Moses, no. You remember, uh, he told Moses no one time. Matter of fact, he reviewed it for us, and I think it's in Deuteronomy, where he obviously preached God several times. He wanted to go in with the entourage into the promised land. He wanted to see... He wanted to see the Canaanites driven out of the land. He wanted to be a part of that. And, 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 and he told Israel, he, God was wroth with me. It says, uh, he said that uh, God was wroth for me for your sakes. And, and God said, don't ask me about this huh, anymore. So anyway, God, God could tell Moses no, but now uh, we know that God, God delights and, he, and, and, and being gracious to men. So he... he he told Moses, you can't see me and live. But, you know, here we have God makes a provision for Moses, doesn't he? He told him, so well, he said, I tell you what, if there were some things he, he wanted to do uh, uh, for Moses. He, there were some things he wanted to declare to Moses. So he made a provision for Moses. He, he, There's a place by me, he said, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock. And will cover thee with my hand, and I will pass by. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Yeah. And so he makes a provision for man's weakness in this regard, you yeah. see, because man can't see God and live. And uh, it's, that's a weakness that we have. We can't come into God's presence, you see, and get the things that we need. There's things that we need from God, but we can't come into His presence and get them. You see, what a, what a situation that is. What do you do in a situation like that? You know you need, you know you need things, but you can't, you can't go and get them. Job understood this. This was brought out uh, by one of the brethren just today, I think. Uh, Job, that was Brother Ricky. Job said that, uh, you know, he realized this, that, that there needs to be somebody to stand in between. Uh, uh, he called it a daysman. He needs to stand in between man and God because he realized there's some things that men need and, and we just uh, we can't get them. We need them badly. Uh, amen. Amen. Men need fixing, you know. Uh, that's a serious problem. It's, it's, a, it's a fixing they need on the inside. Uh, it's a kind of, I call it a fixing. It's a kind of fixing that only God can do. Uh, everybody knows that humanity is in a wretched state. It's just, just a mess. Uh, that, the world is full of professionals. It's, it's, it's exclusively their job to work with this situation. Uh, they, they, they can claim to be able to fix and to help in all these kind of areas where man is weak. They offer, they got all kind of programs and, and they're all designed and because of the wretched state that men are in. Yeah, right. because what I'm saying is men themselves know we need, we need fixing in a serious way. And, uh, but you know, in spite of all of this, uh, it's just as fast as they build them, the prisons and jails, men, they, we fill them right up. See, so in spite of this, it's... Uh, it's a situation we got. Now, this example of Moses, it illustrates how by God's management, management, God's management, Moses was able to receive from God. And uh, Moses was able to see God's hinder parts. It's kind of like today. We see through a glass darkly. You know, it's the same kind of thing. And, but my point in all of this, see, is, brethren, that God provides a means and he continues to do this. He provides a means to what man needs. And the situation is only God can provide these. I wanted to establish this point. Uh, so we don't go to other places for these things. So we go to God because only God can provide these. We don't go to other men because only God can do the kind of fixing men need. And uh, it's, this is addressed in the Scriptures, brethren. The only writings on the face of the earth that really address these kind of problems that man face are the Scriptures. And uh, the cause for our present situation, it's, it's also revealed in the Scriptures. The, the cause for the situation and the, the solution, they're all in the Scriptures. It's the only body of writing that uh, addresses these things. Men are told straight out, right flat out, uh, what the problem is. The Scriptures say men are alienated from the life of God dead in trespasses and sins. That's what the Scriptures say. And that accounts for the wretched state humanity's in. So we're born that way. That's what the problem is. The Scripture not only defines the truth of the cause, it brings an absolute, an absolute solution. The problem is so grave and serious 
God calls it the salvation of God. You see, he, that's what He calls it. And this salvation that is brought to men through the working of God, throughout the working of God's eternal purpose, is found only in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Son of God Himself brought it. He brought the salvation to man. Now, the salvation of God, it's only a part, you see, of the purpose for those who come to him through Christ Jesus. It will save man from total ruin. It will do that. It will also, it will also transform men into a new creation. See how much greater this thing. It will prepare man to dwell with God. Amen. This kind of salvation is in view of eternal life. So this is kind of fixing we're talking about here, yeah. see, with God's salvation. It's not about God giving everything back that Adam lost. Yeah. It's not about that, yeah. see. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not in God's intent to restore man back to his previous state. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We don't have a God that goes back, you see. He, he's not going back. Yeah. He's ever moving forward. And those who have, who have been called by His glory and grace, while well, we're moving with Him, brethren. Uh, we're, we're now being changed, and that's how we're moving. We're being changed from one stage of glory to the next. It's a progressive thing. And, uh, and God is progressive, and the people of God are progressive. That means we move along with Him as He leads us. A summary statement from John the Baptist, and John answered the, and said, He answered and said, A man can receive nothing except he be given from him from heaven. Well, you know, in this country, I wrote this before the results, but in this country... A man gets four years to turn things around, to make things better. That, that's the way it's supposed to work. And if he does a pretty good job and people are satisfied, he might get four more years. Uh, but, if, but if he does nothing, if he's fruitless, uh, then he, uh, he gets removed and someone takes his place. That's supposed to. <laughs> but... So, but it does make sense, doesn't it, the way it's set up? Because if uh, we want to go to someone who can get the job done, and uh, so you know, I, I thought about this, and and for people who have got themselves in a situation, uh, people who desire God, and and that but this, they just, there's nothing going on for them. There's nothing happening. So they need to they need to remove that situation from them, and they need to go somewhere where something is taking place. We we need to we. Don't need to put up with a religion that is fruitless and barren and with leaders who don't know what God is doing. We need to throw these kind of things down and, and, uh, and determine themselves. People need to determine themselves to find God. And He's a God who's working salvation upon, upon the face of the earth. And he, he, that's what He's doing. What did the prophet say in Isaiah 46? For I'm a God and there is none else. For I am God and there is none like me. Yea, I have spoken it will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it and will also do it. Hearken unto me, ye stout-hearted that are far from righteousness. I bring near my righteousness. It shall not be far off, and my salvation shall not tarry. I will place salvation in Zion for Israel my glory. In another place, the same prophet says, Behold, I will do a new thing. It shall spring forth. It shall ye not know it. I will make even a way into the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And you have found this new and living way, haven't you? And you have found yourself at a place that is not barren, but that has plenty of water. Amen. We have a God who says what He means, and He, and he does what He says. His Word cannot but uh, do what it was sent to do. We've talked about this already. It's impossible for God to be at a fault. It's impossible for what God says not to take place. I will bring my righteousness near, he says. I will do a new thing. Shall it not spring forth? I'm here to tell you. There are rivers in the desert places, brethren. And there are wells of salvation in this land. Jesus Amen. told the woman at the well, But the water that I shall give shall be a well of water springing up into an everlasting life. If you're dipping in a well, brethren, that's dry. Yep. And if, that's, if you're lingering in a place that's all dried up, mm -hmm. then you have no one to blame but yourself, you yep. see. Mm -hmm. Because you got the word from God on this, Amen. didn't you? And that that uh, when God said, mm -hmm. I will make it come and I'll make it take uh, happen and take place. You know, brethren, uh, we have a word from God on this. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I do hope that the word you received is a word from God. I wanted to say that.
So much of what we've been hearing today and what's being peddled behind the pulpits of the land is a, it's not a word from God. It's a word from men. So I hope the word you received is a word from God. Paul would say, what we preach is not a word we have received from men, but it's a word we received from God. We had, we had to come just right out and he had to, Paul just had to come right out and tell the Galatians, the gospel which we preach or the gospel which was preached by me, it is not after men. Neither, uh, I re uh, for I neither received it of men, neither was I taught it, but, I, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Later Paul said, I preached the same message. Let's paraphrase. I preached the same message that the other apostles uh, preached. And I, I didn't receive this word from other men. You know, it was after uh, it was three years that uh, before, uh, Peter, uh, before uh, Paul even went to Jerusalem to meet with Peter for a couple of weeks there. So this message, he, he started off preaching right off the bat. See, yeah. it came from the Lord. Yeah. And uh, yeah. how do I know if what I've received is a word from man or God? How do I know what I've received? Well, it's the same way that Paul could tell. Mm -hmm. Paul could tell you. How, he said this, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectively worketh also in you that believe. So that's, that's how Paul... Uh, responded to that question. He's not talking so much about the receptive attitude of the believers here, which they were, he, as he is the power of God yeah. to, to do something to change men. Yeah. The Word of God does a work, doesn't it? The Word of, of men, it does nothing. You see? Uh, that is why almost everything we see in the religious world, unfortunately, uh, is just an abject failure. It just really is. Uh, Paul says, we, and you know what? I don't boast. I don't, it doesn't give me a lot of, uh, I don't get happy having to say these things. But, and it doesn't give me a lot of, it's not something to preach about really. But it's something that needs to be said and it's, it's just an unfortunate situation. And we should be, be, able to, be able to preach other things and have to constantly go on back and addressing these kind of things. Paul says we have a word given from God. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Meaning the word of God, it culminates in the revelation of Jesus Christ. There's a crowning work, seems to me, to be done by the word of God. There's a, there's a crowning work that the word of God is going to do. It will be seen in that day when all of what God has said has come to pass. You, yes. Can you see the glory there? When the sky rolls back like a scroll and the old, wake, and the old makes new uh, way for the new. Uh, and... And, and that's the way it's going to be. It's going to be uh, like that. Uh, but until that day, uh, we preach Christ. Mm -hmm. To reveal His Son in me, that I might preach Him among the heathen. <clears throat> you know that there's a big question in the minds of those who go to school to learn how to speak. <laughs> they preach, things like that. They want to know, what do we preach? And then they secondly, they've, well, how do we preach it? You know, so they got courses for all this. But, you know, Paul said, we preach Christ crucified. Amen. We preach to all men crucified. We don't have a different message for different groups and backgrounds. If they belong to the fallen race of, of Adam, well, we preach Christ crucified. People ask, ask me, so what do y'all preach over there? You know, and I said, well, we preach Christ and Him crucified. But, I mean, what do y'all believe over there? And I said, well, we believe that too. Yeah. Well, we believe that. But now, for those to, who depend on their own merits, that they, go, they got another message beside this, they depend on other things. Right. Preach, preaching Christ, you see, crucified, it, it's a stumbling, it's an occasion for stumbling right. for them, see. Because that, that automatically rules out anything they're going to be able to do. They stumble at that. To the world of crucifixion, it's mere foolishness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Crucified. But to those who are called unto salvation, brother, we realize Jesus is the power and wisdom of God unto salvation. Amen. That's what Paul preached. And those, and that's what we're going to continue to preach too. And we don't seek to change the message. What about that word Joseph received? A special word he got from an angel. A messenger of the Lord that was sent from him. For he shall save his people from their sins. Okay? It happened like this. Mm -hmm. And while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, mm -hmm. fear not to take unto thee and marry thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son that shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from 
their sins. Amen. The angel has announced to Joseph the intentions of God in Christ Jesus for all, all His people yeah. Yeah. will be known as a people who do not sin, brethren, because we're no longer enslaved. He will save their people from their sins. Peter will proclaim, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Paul will declare in Romans 10, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Everything Thing in the law fulfilled in Christ Jesus, amazing, and that that the law, in that the law points to Jesus as He's the substance of it. To have been properly taught by the law, it's to be, it's been, uh, it's been like being led by the hand to Jesus Christ. Because you see, the law of Moses was not a, a word of faith, was it? No. The law is not of faith. Galatians three twelve said it's all about doing. Well, man can't do that. That's where uh, this is where it cripples man's efforts. Is that man can't do what the law requires? Mm -hmm. Now, the message of Christ is a word of faith, mm -hmm. which is a word of faith which we preach. Paul said, Romans ten eight. What was given to man first anyway? <clears throat> the law of Moses or a word of faith? What did man receive first? Well, hundreds of years before the law of Moses was given on Mount Sinai, Adam and Re Adam and Eve received the promise. Mm -hmm. It was a word of faith, brethren. It was a word given for them to have, okay, and to believe. There's something that they could take a hold of. God give it to them. The Scriptures all say Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. No matter how incomplete the message was at that time, it was still a message, and it was a, it was a word about the, the author and finisher of our faith. The Word of God is powerful and effective. It will produce faith in those who believe it. Faith is greater than our human sight. Faith will do a job that human sight will fail at, fail, right. will fail to accomplish. Faith in Christ Jesus can take us right to God, brethren, something our human sight can't do. The heathen, they aren't satisfied with the testimony of hearing. They've got to see it. They do. They don't believe what they hear about heaven and what they hear from heaven. We want to see some evidence. You have some evidence to go along with that. Uh, they may they say, I don't want to hear about Jesus Christ. Let me see Him. Uh, if, if I could just see someone raised from the dead, you know. Uh, if I could just see Noah's Ark and just on and on. Some art, they got, you got some artifacts that I can see. But, but that is not the truth. The, the, that is not the truth. Faith comes by hearing. We got a word from God on this, brethren. We know the truth. Anyway, we know the truth. You can't really trust what you see. Anyway, the world teaches us seeing is believing, but that is not right. We don't believe that, do we? Men all say all kind of things, though. There's simply no truth in them, most of it. About 99%. I have heard disparaging remarks made about God's people and about God. And uh, simply because of unbelief. It, comes, it, it flows from out of unbelief. But God, God, but you know, here's a reassuring uh, factor or a, a reassuring thought. God is greater than our unbelief. Amen. Because faith is greater than seeing, you see. And faith is a remedy for unbelief. Men need to listen up and take heed. I want to look at the, uh, the account of the rich man and Lazarus, and I want to pick it up after they both are dead. I'll make it short. Lazarus was found, and you know this, the thing as good as I do, but Lazarus was found in the bosom of Abraham being comforted, and the rich man was found in torment where he lifted up his eyes to where Abraham was and Lazarus, and he asked that Lazarus could come with water and cool his tongue. There was water where Lazarus was. But Abraham said, uh, that will not be possible uh, because there's a great gulf fixed between here and there and it's not possible that we should go back and forth. Yeah. Besides you had all the good things and Lazarus didn't have nothing. So then the rich man put in, he said send Lazarus back to testify to my five brothers about this place of torment. Abraham said no, for they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And the rich man said, well, he called him Father Abraham. And nay, Father Abraham, but if one went back from the dead, then they would repent. They would repent. And he said, Luke 16, 31, And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. If they do not believe the Scriptures, they will not believe what they see. 
Okay, that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God has always been this way because it's impossible to please God without faith. God has always preceded His works with the message. He always said, this is what I'm going to do, and then He did it. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou by unbelief. Back in Romans 10 where our text is found, there's a little line of reasoning that begins in verse 1 and it continues through 17 where Paul says, Faith cometh by hearing, and, 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 and he concludes when the verse 17 where it says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, this line of reasoning, it's really not about, uh, about faith and believing. Although the subject concerns uh, this thing, uh, it, it's, it's not about preaching, although it, it, it concerns preaching. But really, Paul is talking about the righteousness that's what he's really addressing here. He's talking about the righteousness that comes from God. The, the righteousness that comes from God Amen. is not a result of anything that we have done. Yeah. Uh-huh. It is not a, a result of anything we can see. Uh-huh. It's not a result of anything we can do, but rather it's believing in what God said. Amen. And furthermore, it is important to note what kind of believing he's talking about too. What kind of believing is this, brother? And I'll, I'll wrap this up quick as I can. The way it's stated here, that it's believing in thine heart that thou shalt be saved. It's the way it's said in the scriptures. Faith is not faith is is not of the mind. It's of the heart. You see, it's it's of the it's actually the giving of the heart to God in faith is what's taking place here, and it's the surrendering of the heart uh, that will convince the intellect. And persuade the mind. That's, right. That's the way it works. Yeah. We, we got the cart before the horse. Yeah. And he's eating out the tailgate. Yeah. Give your heart to the things of God. And you won't have a problem with the intellect. It'll follow along yeah. and be persuaded. And the promise of God says, And thou shalt be saved. Which of course, it meant to tell us the conclusion concerning the outcome of our faith. It will be to our salvation. Faith enabled Paul to say, I know that the conclusion of this will be for my salvation. That's amazing declaration. We need to believe the implications of what God has said. Again, a man asked a question, how does one come about getting this faith to God? And we say, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. See, it's the same answer every time. Yeah. Faith then is exclusively by hearing. Yeah. This means faith come, does not come by any other means. I, I, I want to say it again. In terms, of, in terms of obtaining faith now, here are a few things that have to be discarded. <coughs> faith is not something we can give ourselves. It's not something that we can figure out. Uh-huh. Nor do we discover that faith lies dormant within us. Uh-huh. And, and, and that, the, that the earthly can have nothing to do with the heavenly. It cannot be passed down. Faith cannot be passed down uh-huh. through the bloodline. Uh-huh. Children can't inherit faith. Uh-huh. Uh, faith does not come by an experience. Faith comes from outside this realm. Amen. Nothing that is temporal... Nothing is content- can have anything, anything to do with the eternal things of God. You have heard some ridiculous claims concerning faith. I know you, that you've heard these things. I have too. But Jesus asked a question out loud. In the day that the Son of Man returns, shall he find faith on the earth? Now, faith is a work of God. It's a message that God has prepared for men to hear. Those whose hearts have been prepared beforehand, that God has prepared beforehand, and so that when they hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, they'll receive it. You know, in all the work, now this has been brought out already, and I just want to hit it real, real lightly, in all the work that God has done, there is nothing that He has done that has been without the greatest attention to detail and specifics. I'm always astounded by this. We see it in the manner of God's creation in the universe and the earth. Uh, he is, and He has put as much specifics into things that are microscopic and unseen and invisible as He has in the dominant and observable things. He, the details and specifics runs throughout everything God has created. And so when we speak of a, of a salvation that God has given us, uh, it's this way too. 
the conditions that involve in sending God's Son into the world, it, it, we, it's got a lot of details and aspects in it. And, uh, so that God, I want to say, so ahead of time, God prepared this world to receive Jesus Christ. And, and He uh, prepared a special people right. and a special culture. We, we talk about this regularly. And why was the world the way it was when Jesus came? Why was it like this when Jesus came into the born into the world? Why, would God, why did Jesus find the world the way? Well, that's the way God wanted it. That's right. That He prepared it that way. All the circumstances that... That Jesus found when he got here, John the Baptist preparing the way. That's all the things that God had done. Those twelve men that found Jesus, well, they, God was did that. Say God prepared these men. Uh, these things were not happenstance. They were they were created, orchestrated by God. And see, see, so we can see how God has handpicked, he has handpicked those that will be come to his son. You know, like long time ago. Uh, fathers used to pick their daughter's husbands. He, if he knew better than she did that when, when he'd come over to visit in the afternoon and he saw that she was getting ready for him, so that meant she wanted him to come, he didn't run him off. But what he would do was he would check out the family. If it was a sorry old family, he didn't, he, he didn't want to be his family. Well, he would you know, he, he, did, he interceded in that. Now, I mean, God is just this way, brother. He's handpicked right. them brethren his, that he's going to be married to his son. Yeah. Just not anybody yeah. is going to get married to Jesus Christ. He, God, what I'm saying, the Father yeah. is handpicking the, the people of God. And as far as we're concerned, it's anybody who wants to come. That's what we preach. Right. But the facts are, God is handpicking those that come to, he's going to be married to his son. Yeah. When the elect and chosen ones of God hear this word, they respond to faith. And, and it's born. It's a work of God to prepare men for the hearing of the word of faith. Now, you don't have to be a profound thinker. and It doesn't hurt. And you don't have to be a refined and polished speaker to bring men to Christ. God's doing that. That's God's work. And let me tell you, God is not just bringing anybody either. When one proclaims the gospel, that word of faith... The Word of God takes place. It's in the heart when it's received. It doesn't depend on the eloquence of men. Isn't that a relief? Mm -hmm. This work of salvation is very complicated, and I expect it to be. It's something God's doing, you see, and God is working it. Uh -huh. And uh, what we know of it has been revealed to us. That's how complicated it is. You're not going to figure it out. I'm not. When we speak of the elect of God and the chosen of God, we don't know, have no idea who they are ahead of time. Quite frankly, we don't want to know. What we do know is that the faith of God, it does a work, brethren. Amen. Now, I uh, want to close this out. Faith is then not something that we can, uh, that we can imagine. And it's not something that we can conjure up mm -hmm. through some kind of method or system of religion. God just doesn't blanket the earth with faith. He just doesn't scatter faith out there and just, it just springs up wherever it will. But it involves a surrendering of the heart to what we have heard of Christ. And it's a giving. It's a giving of our, the willingness and the giving of ourselves and the belief of this testimony. This is the conditions by which we receive this faith. These, we given, we're given our hearts to these. <clears throat> well, pursuing God in Christ Jesus, this is our salvation, isn't it? That's the way we see it. And the pursuit is necessary because the environment that it's working in. Salvation, it belongs to an unseen realm. That's where, that's where we have set our sights. Mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking about Hebrews 11. That, and I considered this, maybe this is a prerequisite of being a child of God. It's to understand that we are pilgrims and sojourners. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, you know, that was a testimony, the testimony of the brethren. They understood. They considered themselves pilgrims. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and, and, and sojourners on the land, until you understand yourself to be a sojourner and a pilgrim on this earth, I don't know really you, if, you're, if you're aware of faith or not. But see, yeah. I think you, at some point you've got to be aware, you know, I'm a sojourner and I'm a wayfarer man on this earth and I'm going to a different land. And, until you've really taken a hold of that, I don't think you can throw yourself in that same group as those in, in uh, Hebrews 11. That's just a thought. I, uh, so in this, um, and so in this text, we have, um, we have some very good things to consider. Yes. We, have, uh, we have faith, and we have preaching, and we have the Word of God. They're all indispensable. Yeah. And they're all an indispensable message that links us to an indispensable Christ. Mm -hmm. And see, an indispensable thing is something you can't do without. It yeah. must have it. That's so we must right. we must have the hearing. That's right. Okay. We must have the preaching. And we must have the word of God. Yeah. If we if, and we must have Christ, brethren. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me have Christ. Yeah. And so that's what we preach. Thank you, brethren. Yeah. Yeah.